Hey, Randy Joe here, and today we are going to be reacting to Franzoli by Psychedelic Porn Crumpets. And again, this is just a reaction. This is not a full-length review. If you want a review, you can go to www.theaveragejoesmusicopinion.com where you can find my full-length review about how I feel about this album after I've given it multiple listens. But again, this is just a first reaction. So, uh, without further ado, we're going to jump into this. Franzoli by Psychedelic Porn Crumpets. They are a unique uh, Australian garage rock, psychedelic rock band uh, that falls in a lot of the same trails as King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Although, unlike King Gizzard, I think they typically stick to the genre of garage or psychedelic rock. But again, Franzoli is their latest release, just came out on November 10th, which is today, and it is only 33 minutes long. So without further ado, uh, let's just get into it with the first track, Newt Mare, Killing Meow. That is the full length with multiple uh, brackets intertwined. Just crazy riffs right off the bat. Oh, jeez. The uh, mix is very muddy, I think intentionally so. Adds the garage rock aesthetic. Vocals very expectedly washed out into the mix. But the riffs on this thing are just brutal. That, that, that bass line that kind of comes in and out there. It's almost metal-esque. Ooh. I like this like a little breakdown here. That look metal-esque delivery there with the drumming and the guitars really is the standout moment of this track. Like that part that's Not sure how I feel about the vocals. Kind of reminds me of Squid for some reason. So much going on, it's very dense. Oh. Kind of like a gentle sampled outro. Alright, not sure how I feel about that one. Very noisy, very abrupt. Um, the mix is a little bit rough around the edges, but I think that might be an intentional artistic choice. Uh, but still, just very in your face. Next, we're going to go on to I'm a Cadaver, Alakazam. Very garage rock focused. Kind of reminds me of um, Cage the Elephants, earlier tracks especially. Still not sure how I feel about the uh, overall production of it. I like this part though. That uh, sort of elevated, overblown style. I do like this one more than the, the first track, I think. I think it's got more of a groove to it. Ooh. Oh, that guitar part. Chef's Kiss. Absolutely gorgeous. I think that just rising and falling cascading sort of guitar there against the uh, very rough production is Just amazing. It's very uh, clean too compared to the rest of the instrumental Oh that really makes the outro I thoroughly enjoyed that one uh, Far more than I think the opener, but maybe the opener will come around on me once I kind of grow with the album but I will say, I'm a Cadaver, Alakazam, full of some great grooves. That guitar uh, riff in the second half especially really makes this thing, pulls it all together. Next we've got Dilemma Us from Evil. I guess it's like Deliver Us from Evil. I like this one. A bit more laid back in tone. I like that, that sound in the background there. It sounds almost like... um. Some sort of like gentle high pitch piano little lick. Oh, I like this guitar 
I like the vocalist more on this one. Maybe he's just growing on me. The sort of stripped back instrumentals and in certain passages here. I really enjoy that aspect. Because their instrumentals can be very claustrophobic at times. Well, this breakdown at the end here is brilliant. Ooh. Not sure who the guitarist uh, takes place on this band, but the guitarist is brilliant. Really adds to that very rough guitar garage rock aesthetic. Love that one. Again, claustrophobic uh, instrumentals really take hold in their music. Just really like overblown production. Uh, but carrying on, we've got Captain Gravity Mouse Welcome. The titles of these tracks will not be easy to remember. Uh, which could be a flaw to some extent. I think some, you know, albums have titles that just do not stick in the head. I think do more damage than good. But that's just a personal gripe. Carrying on though, we've got Captain Gravity Mouse. Welcome. Let's get right into it. This one's much uh, more gentle. Laid back. This one's got a very nice melody to it, but it's nothing is jumping out at me. Um, other than just the more laid-back approach to this one. I like this passage here though, it's really nice. Yeah, again, nothing really sticking out about this one, I'm sorry. I want to like it more considering it's a much more gentle approach, but it's it's not doing much for me. It's going in one ear at the other. Maybe that one's a bit more of a grower. Alright, going right to the next, we've got All Aboard the SS Sinker. Jesus. Kicks right into gear. I find their sound tends to just sort of blend all together. Like, not just in the track, not just the production, but like, it's hard to tell some of these songs apart just from the uh, overall tone. I don't know, maybe it's just me as a fresh new listener. I like this part here, the rising sort of... Um, backup vocals. I like that sample in the background too. Oh, this is crazy. It's got that noise aspect to it. I like the samples that kind of work their way into the mix. Just wish there was like more to the instrumental aspects that differentiates itself. Here, sorry, here we are on Hot Heat Wow Hot. That's the name of this track. Ooh. Very punk in its aesthetic as well here. It's like they take Garage Rock and blend in a sense of punk. Thing is, these moments of interest that pop up throughout the album that personally make me go oh I like this I like that there's such minuscule moments between a lot of the same noisy overblown aesthetics that I think they seem to sort of uh meander in a bit too much but again maybe that'll grow on me maybe that's just something that takes time the vocals as well using that same sort of filter and all of it. A very typical garage rock aesthetic that personally I always find tends to become too grating um, and just too typical, you know. I like that sort of That riff there is um Sounds very like Egyptian esque. And I like that aspect. Alright, closing things out. And I like the ending of that one quite a bit. But again, like I said, I do find some of this to be far too typical as it carries on. Uh, next, we've got Sierra Nevada. Every track here seems to be around the same length of three and a half minutes, give or take. Oh, for once, 
his vocals are not drenched in that just overblown reverb heavy filter. Which I like. I like having that change up. I'm liking this one though. I'm liking the riffs. I'm liking the aesthetic choices and the vocals. Okay. Very noisy. Very out of this world. The sort of synthy, droney, zany aesthetics kind of remind me of a tropical fuckstorm. And also a great Australian rock band, by the way. Very weird, though. Very out there. I enjoyed that one's uh, more stripped back aesthetics, especially with the vocals in the first half. I like some of the riffs here and there. But again, not sticking with me great. I don't think this album is one that's going to uh, grow on me that much. It might grow on me a little bit. I think I have to get used to the very overblown aesthetics. But again, it is going in one out the other. Illusions of Grandeur is the next one with a minute and 46 seconds. It's short. It's sweet. Maybe it's right to the point. Oh, it is. It is short and sweet. I like gentle acoustic playing. Definitely a little detour. I like this one. It's much gentler. Definitely the most unique so far in terms of being out of the norm from them. I like this one. The lyrics are very gentle as well, and I think that's going to be the standout point is the lyrics. So in my review, I'll, I'll probably dive into those more. But I like that one. It's very sweet, very short. Um, I like the detour into more acoustic instrumentals as well. Next, we've got the second to last track here, Pill House, Papa Moonshine. I like the name of that one. It's got a ring to it. I like a lot of the samples. I just wish, uh, I guess there was more to them. But I'm a sucker for samples. This is the longest track on here, too, at four and a half minutes. It's like a beeping aesthetic, or it's like a beeping uh, effect. I really do think the best aspect of this album is the guitarist. Those the riffs that they do throughout this whole album. The drumming's been pretty steady as well. The, the drumming's been pretty consistent in quality. That echoey effect is uh, pretty trippy and psychedelic. This part, that whole riff there too, like that's fantastic. It's, those are the more memorable aspects. Generally feeling the same way I have about that one that I did the rest. Kind of just more of the same. Final track, Mr. and Miss Misanthropy. Let's just get into it, close this thing out, three minutes. Very sunny in this aesthetic. Most garage rock albums have that uh, stylistic choice. Yeah, that's true. I can relate to that. I'm liking this one quite a bit. It's more upbeat tone against the very depressing lyrics. I wish the sample was brought forward more there. Again, it's very hard to hear it over the instrumental there. I like this sort of uh, building instrumental to close things out. I think this is one of the better tracks here. So fade out. And that pretty much does it for Franzoli by Psychedelic Porn Crump. It's only 33 minutes. And I gotta say, that is my first listening experience of Psychedelic Porn Crumpets. So take that into account if you're a big fan, I apologize, but this album, for the most part, on a first reaction at least, did not quite do much for me. I think there are tons of moments of interest throughout this album, especially when it comes to the guitar playing, some of the drumming. The drumming remains fairly consistent uh, throughout this album. There are tons of great riffs and guitar licks throughout this thing. The bass line on some of the tracks here is great. But the vocalist tends to just become 
a little bit dull as it goes on, too much of the same. And the sampling in this album is an interesting aspect, but I just wish it was brought more to the forefront. The last track here, I liked it quite a bit. I thought it kind of ends with a high note on the album, but overall, this album tends to feel a bit too much, too, too similar between the tracks. And the overblown production as well is something that I think I will get used to with more listens. So yeah, that pretty much does it. If you want to check out my review, you want to know how I feel after multiple listens, uh, that will be up at the time of releasing this video at www.theaveragejoesmusicopinion.com. And you can see my overall thoughts there and what I think of this thing. Maybe they turned around. Maybe since I recorded this first reaction, I've come around to really enjoy the overall project. But uh, as of right now, I will say this thing is a little bit middle of the road at the moment for me. But that pretty much does it for me. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe if you want to see me react to more albums. Hopefully I'll have some more positive ones coming because this one, although not overtly negative, was a bit of a uh, letdown for me personally. But uh, yeah. As always, my name is Randy Joe, or The Average Joe, and I'm signing off. <laughs>